Thank you, Speaker, and I am glad to stand in the Legislative Assembly of Ontario today in support of this motion and the sick community. And I would also like to welcome back to Queen's Park our friends, neighbours, and leaders of Ontario's sick community. So welcome back to Queen's Park. <laughs> Speaker, back in June, my colleague, the member from Bramley Gore Malton, introduced a motion, which I will remind us stated that in the opinion of this House, the Government of Ontario should recognize the November 1984 state organized violence perpetrated against the six throughout India as a genocide. I appreciated then, as I do now, that my colleague is a tireless crusader against injustice, for which he continues to distinguish himself, and I am very proud to be a member of the same caucus. Speaker, back in June, I was very glad to speak in support of our legislature recognizing the intent of the anti-Sikh violence that occurred in India in 1984 and denouncing all intolerance and violence across the globe that stems from hatred. I approached that debate back in June from a place of introduction. I was not familiar with the events of November of 1984. I had to research, I had to learn, to understand the gravity of the history and the importance of the motion. I was proud to speak and support the Sikh community and Mr. Singh's motion. Speaker, I was confused, uh, to say the least, when this legislature did not unanimously support it. In June, the government unanimously voted against it for reasons that seemed so empty and, quite frankly, political. Speaker, it was truly astonishing that the government voted against the original motion introduced by my colleague, the member from Bramley Gore Malton, and what's even more astonishing was their justification. Members of this Liberal government actually argued that not enough people had died to truly constitute a genocide, and they didn't want to in any way diminish how atrocious other genocides were by including this. It is unbelievable, Speaker, and I am glad that the government has since realized the depth of that error. At that time, this government argued that the Legislative Assembly isn't even the right forum to recognize a genocide. They said it wasn't the right place or the right court for having this discussion. But of course, we know that is not the case. This Assembly has recognized acts of genocide in this very chamber, including the Armenian Genocide and Holodomor. This is exactly the right forum. This is where we discuss this is where we discuss and debate issues that affect the people of Ontario, and that includes the thousands of six in Ontario. This is where we speak on behalf of our constituents and all Ontarians, and we should never, ever shy away from using this chamber to stand up against violence, hatred, and intolerance. So I must disagree with the government's original argument, and I am relieved, frankly, to see that they have reevaluated and repositioned themselves. It was less than a year ago that the Liberals unanimously voted against the motion. However, here we are today, and as we often do, we have found a way forward, this time with all party support, and we are again debating this important issue. It's important that we have an official position as a province to ensure that we remember the thousands of victims who lost their lives during this genocide, and a formal resolution renews the call to bring the perpetrators to justice. We cannot change the horrific events of 1984, but as members of this legislature, we have an opportunity to represent the families of genocide victims, and we have an opportunity to stand up for them. Though the total number of victims is unconfirmed, between 2,800 and 8,000 people lost their lives during this massacre, and thousands of others were affected by injuries, displacement, and oppression. We are talking about mass murder and massive suffering. It's important that our voices in Ontario are heard. Speaker, there are a lot of voices which came together and inspired the creation of the original motion. In May of 2000, a commission was appointed by the National Democratic Alliance government in India to investigate the violence and its causes. The one-man commission consisted of former Supreme Court of India Justice G. T. Nanavati. In the report, former Supreme Court of India Justice Nanavati stated that the killing of Sikhs in India in 1984 was planned and organized. Human rights organizations have also reported that the voter lists were used to identify and target Sikh businesses and homes, and that children were found beheaded in the aftermath of those horrendous days. The words planned and organized are important. They distinguish this from being a random act of violence and acknowledge that there were systemic and concerted efforts to kill thousands of Sikhs in India. 
Speaker, New Democrats have always supported the right of all people to live in safety and to practice their faith in peace, and that is why my colleague brought forward the original motion for debate. Today we are acknowledging the systemic murder of thousands and calling for justice in their honour. By acknowledging that the violence against Sikhs in India in 1984 was in fact genocide, we are acknowledging that justice must be served. In November, when we reflect on the anniversary of this genocide, it is also important to recognize the brave actions of many from other faith backgrounds and communities who provided protection and refuge to their Sikh brothers and sisters at great personal risk to themselves. It is a reminder that our shared humanity triumphs even in the face of tragedy. I'd like to congratulate the Sikh community for their resilience and unified advocacy. You strengthen our province and make it better. And thank you again to the member from Bramley Gore Malton for first bringing this important issue before the legislature last, ju last June. I will be supporting this motion as I did last year, and I hope that my colleagues from all parties in this legislature will join me. Thank you. Thank you for the debate. For the debate, I recognize the member from Bramley.